morning and a very warm welcome to you to our service here from Strathblane Parish Church of Scotland. Warm welcome to those who are viewing this uh, from the comfort of their own home here in Strathblane, those who are viewing this uh, in some other part of our nation, our land, and those who are viewing this in some other part of the world. A very warm welcome to each one of you. I'm going to read to you today our Bible passage, which is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 7. And we read there as follows. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for you comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for you comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Amen. And may God bless to us this reading from his word. He is the God of compassion, mercy, and comfort, all comfort. The Apostle Paul knew all of us face testing times. It matters not who we are. It can be the loss of a job. It can be the sense of isolation which being shut in at this time can bring to us. It may be the loss of a loved one, some personal grief. We can imagine the tears that are shed and have been shed. We can imagine or picture in the mind's eye a lake of tears that humanity has shed down through the centuries of time. And some of those tears, no doubt, will be your, your tears, and some of those tears, no doubt, will be my tears. But all of us know what it is to have a trial and a testing time and to suffer for a while, some affliction, some difficulty. As a minister, I have walked beside hundreds of people at funeral homes at uh, gravesides, in their own homes, at hospital bedside. I have seen many tears shed, and I have watched God comfort them in ways that uh, can only be described as miraculous and as mysterious, as supernatural, as uh, the love of God and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ has drawn near to comfort and to embrace and his loving arms and folds of those people in their time of need. You may ask the question, why do Christians weep? After all, we have a great hope, don't we? Perhaps we weep because we are called to love in very deep ways, in extraordinarily deep ways. We are called to love as Jesus loved. And you can't get deeper than that. And that's why we feel it when we lose a loved one or when someone we know is going through a difficult time because we have been asked to love in a new way and in a deeper way, to love as even Jesus loved. We are reminded that Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. It means to grieve, it means to mourn over sin, it means to mourn over many things. Jesus said, blessed are those, or blessed are you, or happy are you when you mourn, because you will be comforted. Amazing. There is comfort, comfort at the end of all our difficulties and through our difficulties. That's a great promise. You will weep but you will be healed, you will live again. Life has not ended. Why? Because God the Comforter will heal you again. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This chapter begins by saying he's the God of all comfort, all comfort, not just some comfort, but all comfort, and in effect, all comfort that has ever been comes from God. He's a source of comfort. 
There are other kinds of comforts, no doubt. Uh, we all know the other kinds of comfort. You sit in your chair at the end of a, a, a day of work and you sit there and relax and you're comforted by the chair. Your bed gives you comfort at night. There's the comfort that comes from uh, having a holiday, perhaps some time in the sun, relaxing for a while, a period of rest. Some people take comfort from science. It's right to take comfort from science. Some people might say all our hope of finding a, a cure for COVID-19 uh, will come uh, from scientists and what they might do. And I pray they do find a cure, that scientists will find a cure for COVID-19. But what uh, Paul says here is this, uh, God is the God of all comfort. And in fact, what he's saying is this, he is the one who makes the sun that warms your face shine. He is the one who inspires and gave life to scientists that they might find a cure. He is the source of every comfort that you have ever known. Because all good comes from God. And all comfort comes from him. He is here every day to embrace us and to love us and to care for us in ways unimagined. Paul says... God the Father of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so he is drawing our attention here to the unity between God the Father and God the Son. They are one. And uh, we are being reminded of this. Jesus brought comfort to us also. Because like the Father, he is the comforter. He is a source of comfort. And you think about the ways and the many ways in which Jesus brought comfort to weary and troubled and anxious people. That's why people, broken people, came to Jesus. At the end of every road Jesus travelled on, he ended up meeting a broken person or woman, and he ended up comforting them, him or her. Zacchaeus was a small man, and no one loved him. Jesus did. The woman at the well was a sinner and no one loved her. Jesus did. They found in Jesus one who saw their need, one who felt for them, and one who sat with them and held on to them and helped them. He's a friend to sinners, yes, and he's a friend to all who are hurting, whoever they are. He's the friend of the broken. That's why people still come to Jesus when they hurt. They speak to him, they cry out to him, they lean on him, they rest on him, they put their, all their cares and their burdens over to Jesus. I've seen it so often. I've done it so often. And so have you. We might imagine that the great apostle was so spiritual, possessing such enormous, such wonderful faith, so uh, close to God that he would never fear. Yet we find him here in these verses speaking about uh, how tested and afraid he was. And he tells us that the God of all comfort comforted him. Jesus himself trusted God in his great times of testing God the Father. You remember what Jesus said before he went to the cross? He admitted freely that he was suffering a time of trial and testing. In John 12, 27, 28, we read, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Then, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven and said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Father comforted the Son with the promise of a glorious future and ending. A wonderful hope. He said, in effect, Son, I've got you in this moment, in this hour, and all your pains and all of life in my hand. Do not be afraid. I hold you. 
And later on, as the prospect of the cross drew near uh, to Jesus, he told his disciples, indeed the hour is coming, yes, and has come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me all alone. I shall be forsaken by all, and my hour of need, and my greatest hour, there will be nobody there. And yet, Jesus said, I am not alone, because the Father is with me. John 16, 32. Um, Jesus is saying, I have a provider and a comforter and a friend and one who holds me even when all else and everyone else has forsaken me. One who is beside me to hold me in every dark hour and every moment. And the Father comforted Jesus and held him you look at this passage, you'll see that the word mercy uh, is used in some translations. The word uh, mercy used here is not the ordinary word uh, for the act of showing mercy. The, this word refers to a display of concern over the sufferings of someone else. It expresses this idea of showing you, you care. Some time ago, my granddaughter said she would like to see a horse close up. I said, next time I see a horse pass by, I will take you outside to see it. Then one evening, when she was in her pajamas, barefooted and ready for bed, a horse rider, a horse and a rider appeared at the our front gate. So I ran in and said to, to her, I'll carry you outside to see a horse. So I did. Her brother was in bare feet, ready for bed too. He said, I want to come also. So he came following on behind us. He had to stand on the stones, the gravel and the drive, and I could hear him say, ooch, ooch, as the stones went through his bare feet, causing him great discomfort. We saw the horse. I carried my granddaughter back inside, and my grandson followed after me. By the time we got inside, he was weeping. I wondered why. He said it, it was those stones. They hurt so much. I sat, thought about it for a little while. Did the stones really hurt that much? Maybe they did. Then he went on to say, You carried my sister in your arm over each of those stones, but you did not carry me why. I realized that what really hurt him was that I carried her, that I embraced her and not him. Uh, he felt unseen, his pain and his needs unnoticed. As if he was saying, you noticed her need, but you did not notice my need. That's what the word mercy means. It means uh, that someone sees our needs and their suffering. And when they see our need and our suffering, they say, I see you. I feel for you. I will carry you. We all need that at times of trial. And our God is the Father of saying, I see you. I feel for you. I will carry you. It is what Jesus experienced. The comfort of the Father. Even through the cross of Calvary, I will carry you. I will hold on to your life and your soul and take you home, glorifying you and myself. He goes on to say, the apostle, he's the God of all comfort. The word comfort, an old English word, uh, has two uh, words which we put together. The one is come and the other is fought. Come beside to fortify, come beside to strengthen, come beside to carry and to help. That's what I should have done for my grandson. That's what he was looking for. Someone who would carry him over the stones. Someone who would carry him perhaps through the whole journey of life. It is what we all long for. Someone who sees us. Someone who notices us and someone ready to carry us 
through every difficult circumstance into eternal life, into the loving arms of God. That's what Paul says God will do for us all. And this is quite a revelation. The passage is telling us that all true comfort has its ultimate source in our merciful Heavenly Father. All strength, all the strength you ever had and all the strength you will ever need has come from God, Almighty God, the strong God who has given us life and created us. So Paul says, look to God today. He's ready to comfort, to be merciful. See what he says in verse number five. Now, knowing God looks on me, knowing he never misses a tear I shed or a whimper I utter, he loves me in Christ, I can face difficult times. Knowing he loves me and cares for me and deeply, I can face anything. Now he says, but don't stop there. Now that you know all that, you're carried, you're loved. He sees you, he notices you, he comes beside you and he is ready to bless and to strengthen you and lift you up. To forgive and to pardon. Now he says, don't stop, don't stop there. Now that God has strengthened you and filled you with courage and strength on the road of life. Go out and strengthen others. If God has strengthened you, then go and strengthen others. How do I do that, you ask? As you walk down the road of life, weep with those who weep, sit with those who are alone, speak of eternal life in Jesus' name to those who mourn. Call someone who is self-isolated and lonely. Call someone who is depressed and low. Be like Jesus was on the road of life. Every road ended up with Jesus reaching someone who was broken to bless them and to heal them and to help them because that's the God of all comfort. And that's what he does. May God help each one of us to be like him. As he strengthens us, may we strengthen others. Amen. Shall we pray together? Merciful God, merciful God, we worship today. Uh, we celebrate your goodness. We thank you for your presence in our lives. May your spirit draw near to each one of us now, wherever we are seated and found this day. May we know the deep love and care you have for each one of us. Surround us with your loving arms. Assure us of your constant care. You never miss a tear we shed or any difficulty we go through. You're ready to carry us, carry us at all times. Remind us Jesus is on the road we are on today, ready to see us, ready to hear us, ready to notice us, ready to lift us up, ready to heal us, ready to forgive us, ready to take us home to glory. All that we ask, and all that we pray for, we pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for viewing today, and uh, God willing, we will see you next week.